but just the basic ability to make sense out of noise, to make decisions out of information yeah. coming from data, incomplete data, garbage data. Yes. I think that's a big key because in addition to knowing the processes and not being afraid to leave your desk and go and go into a DC, talk to the operators, go into a warehouse, go into a manufacturing plant, there's no substitute for seeing and learning any process. But the, the, the volume of data, the terabytes, the petabytes of data that we're getting is not gonna yeah. slow down. Yeah. And the ability to analyze that data correctly, statistically, draw inferences, find causal relationships, and actually make business decisions from it is a huge thing in the supply chain space. Uh, Dr. Mason, I want to ask you this last question. Uh, as you look at the supply chain field, uh, what advice would you give to supply chain professionals who want to grow their careers? What skill set should they acquire or focus on? And I guess this would also apply to your former students at Clemson as they join the mm -hmm. workforce. Now that you have you have experience and you, you, know, you have di more detailed direct experience working in the industry, which is the skill set that is going to serve supply chain professionals? Uh, to me, there are two different dimensions. I'll talk about from the technical side, there's always a need for programming, coding, algorithmic people who develop these solutions for routing and directing flow. I think from the business standpoint, actually my middle daughter is a new college student and she's looking at a supply chain major and her minor is gonna be in analytics. The idea of making information out of data. There is so much data everywhere and most of it's garbage. Yes. And the analytics school skill set, which is, you know, statistical analysis, data visualization, whether you're gonna add machine learning in there or not is fine, but just the basic ability to make sense out of noise, to make decisions out of information yes. coming from data, incomplete data, garbage data. Yes. I think that's a big key because in addition to knowing the processes and not being afraid to leave your desk and go and go into a DC, talk to the operators, go into a warehouse, go into a manufacturing plant, there's no substitute for seeing and learning any process. But the, the, the volume of data, the terabytes, the petabytes of data that we're getting is not gonna yeah. slow down. Yeah. And the ability to analyze that data correctly, statistically, draw inferences, find causal relationships, and actually make business decisions from it is a huge thing in the supply chain space. And on the technical side, which is my background, the engineering side, the ability to model, write programming code, those kinds of things, you know, control robots, all that good stuff. Yeah. Those are the two main thrusts that I see will be big in the future. How wonderful, how, how, how amazing, and, and you're absolutely right. I remember working on a project 25 years ago on an executive information systems. And the biggest challenge was we had so many uh, data islands as they called them within the company. And it was difficult to move data and connect. I'll give you a simple mm -hmm. example of one customer name had, one customer had different names in all the systems and you could not, unless some human sat and said, well, IBM and IBM Corp and uh, IBM subsidiary are all the same company, the systems just couldn't. I mean, it was very difficult for the systems to begin to understand that this was the same customer. Um, mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yes. Well, you need to have actionable intelligence. You need to have, be able to sort that out, like you said, data-driven decisions and be able to make a decision and, and move forward. So that makes perfect sense. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. very good. Peter, uh, any uh, any other point, any other question before we, we wrap up today's program? No, I think it makes perfect sense. Some of the things we talked about from the middle mile to some of the different uh, process automation and those kind of things. I, I'm, I'm still fascinated by that statistics of, having 35,000 orders per second uh, place yeah. and responding to those. And I'm sure that number is just gonna go up and up, but, but you're planning for the long-term, you're putting resources in place where, where, where it may not make straight short-term ROI sense, but to plan for that expansion makes perfect sense. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. And, and that flexibility, I guess, is, is just as important. Peter, mm -hmm. thank you. Yep. Sorry, go ahead, Scott. Uh, no, absolutely. Just agreeing with Peter, 100%. Uh, Peter, thank you for joining me in, in interviewing Dr. Mason. And uh, if, if you're watching this, please go and read uh, Peter's book, Control What You Can. Uh, 
and and give him feedback. I'm sure he'll love that. Peter, thank you for joining me today. And 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 Dr. Scott Mason, thank you, sir. What what a wonderful discussion today. Thank you for helping us understand uh, the scope. Of, of Amazon's logistics and supply chain. It, it is staggering. Uh, and, and really the impact that supply chain and logistics is going to have on our lives, every mm -hmm. aspect of our life, whether it's getting uh, essential items during a, a pandemic or getting gasoline, everything is going to be dependent on, on logistics and uh, supply chain. I love the point that you made about advising uh, entrance, you know, new students who are studying supply chain, entering the workforce, and even supply chain professionals is begin to understand how to identify the key aspects from all the noise that is there. And if that, mm -hmm. and that's true, for not just for supply chain professionals, but it is true for all of us. We are surrounded by so much noise in our lives. We all have to learn to focus on what matters in life absolutely thank absolutely you, sir. well thanks I, thanks for having me today y'all take care absolutely thank you so much thank you all thank you peter thank you uh scott thank you so much thank you robin you bet